would never take this man for some kind of a villain or an underground billionaire. He's a smartphone and gadget enthusiast, a ridiculous simpleton who falls asleep during important events. The internet calls him Dimon. Don't call him Dimon. But after you watch this video by the Anti-Corruption Foundation, you'll realize how wrong you were. Dmitry Medvedev, Prime Minister and former President of Russia, is crazy about money and elite real estate, not gadgets like we all thought. Palaces, residences and ancestral estates, yachts and vineyards in Russia and abroad. We will show you Medvedev's real property and you'll see for yourself that he's one of our country's richest people and one of its most corrupted officials. Corruption should not only be illegal, it should be indecent. The leader of the United Russia Party was much more cunning in building his property empire than the majority of swindlers who register everything through offshores. His system is based on charity foundations controlled by his close confidants, mostly relatives and former classmates. But even the most cunning and sophisticated corrupt official can be caught with the help of some trifle. This investigation, which took us many months, began with one such absurd trifle, a pair of trainers and a shirt, which allowed us to unwind this grandiose tangled snarl of figureheads and dummy corporations. Before we move on, and you'll see things that no one has seen yet, I want to say that this video is accompanied by the massive and very interesting text about our investigation. It contains irrefutable evidence of everything you'll see. Documents, schemes, connections. Take a look to learn more. Let me tell you an amusing story how we discovered Medvedev's empire with the help of some regular online purchases. In 2014, the anonymous international hacked Dmitry Medvedev's iPhone and published his personal correspondence. People behind the hack were recently arrested. Those not under arrest are on the international wanted list. The dump had a lot of interesting things, some work documents, photos from the personal archive, correspondence with other officials, but nothing sensational was found. People mostly wrote that Medvedev has a secret Twitter account and that he buys all kinds of gadgets online. Well, this internet shopping actually held the key to Medvedev's empire. Really, it was always there. One just had to look closely at the purchases and the specific way the orders were made. Here I am confidently stating that this anonymous mailbox really belongs to Medvedev. And I can hear you saying, where is the proof? It could have been anyone's mailbox. Here is the proof. Order dated April 2014. We go to the store's website and find the trainers and take a close look at the pictures. From there on, it's easy. We just methodically sift through all of the official photos and here we see Medvedev wearing these trainers in Vietnam. Let's look further. Here's another order, May 2014. Another pair of trainers. We follow the same procedure, find them on the store's website and then carefully study the photographs. Success once again. Here's Medvedev wearing them. His purchases are not limited to footwear. The checkered shirt that Medvedev wears along with the trainers can also be found among his orders. Here it is. And here's the blue one with the snowflakes. The Prime Minister chose it for his walk around Sochi. I think I can safely stop now because I think you realize that such coincidences are impossible. These orders are made by Medvedev. But that's not the most important thing. What's important is that Medvedev doesn't place the orders in his name and does not use his address. Ask your purse what you should buy. He makes the choices but delivery goes to another person who later personally delivers the purchases to Medvedev. This person's name is Vladimir Dyachenko. At first look, he's completely nondescript. The media has called him an owner of construction companies, and in his interviews he declared that he has nothing to do with Medvedev. But that's not true. He's in charge of not just Medvedev's trainers, but his secret assets as well. The halter on corruption's neck should become tighter and tighter. And all of Russian society agrees on that. The address to which Medvedev's purchases are delivered is home to two firms headed by Dyachenko. 
One of them, Prom Tech Invest, maintains and services Medvedev's secret palaces. The other company, Technipro, holds shares in businesses, which are secretly owned by the Prime Minister. I will tell you all about it in order. We have discovered that ZAO Promtech Invest, of which Diachenko is the general director, has a license from the Federal Service for Environmental, Technological, and Nuclear Supervision. Pay attention to the address where the company undertakes its licensed activities. This is the village of Znaimenske at Rublevo Highway. This is the address of a huge estate with more than four hectares of land, 3,000 square meter house, and a number of other buildings, such as a garage, guest house, pool, and sauna. How interesting, we thought. Who could be the owner of all of this? The state registers show that the land belongs to two legal entities. The Foundation for Socially Important Government Projects and its subsidiary Green Yard. The Foundation for Socially Important Government Projects. The very name attracts attention and begs to look closely. And it became even more interesting when we discovered that the head of the Foundation's Supervisory Council is Medvedev's former university classmate Ilya Yelisev. He is the key figure of our investigation, so it makes sense to share some information about him. Medvedev and Yelisev studied together at the law school of the Leningrad University, and later they taught together and even had a business together. In the mid-2000s, Yelisev's career took off, and he became the deputy chairman of Gazprom Bank board, and continues to work there to this day. Yelisev is Prime Minister's most trusted confidant who manages his assets and unites the manifold system of Medvedev's property. In addition to the Foundation for Socially Important Projects, he's a chairman of the Dar Foundation, which until recently was the nominal owner of Medvedev's secret DACA at Ples. We did a separate investigation about that. Yelisev also chairs the Supervisory Council of the Foundation of Social and Cultural Initiatives, which is the charity foundation of Medvedev's wife, Svetlana. Director of the Foundation for Socially Important Projects is also no outsider. His name is Alexei Chertvetkov. He was also Medvedev's classmate. Here they are, dancing at the reunion. So many coincidences, my head keeps spinning. But this is not all. The director of the foundation's subsidiary company, which is also registered as the owner of land at Znamenskoy, is a certain Leonard Rupstov. No, he's not a classmate. He's the 100% owner of Gradislava Foundation, which today owns Medvedev's secret DACA. The Dar Foundation simply gifted this land plot and everything that stands on it to Gradislava. Why do I share all these details with you? Because this is the gist of Medvedev's corruption scheme. Several non-commercial and charity foundations controlled by his close friends. They are registered as the owners of property that de facto belong to Medvedev. I suspect you can't wait to see Medvedev's Rublevka estate. Can't refuse you this pleasure. Take a look. We are in the vicinity of the village of Znamenskoy. This is very close to Moscow, Rublevo Uspinskoy Highway. This is Russia's most expensive land, full of the most luxurious homes behind very high fences. We turn around and see a rather impressive mansion and a well-groomed territory. We descend a little bit to have a better look at the lot. We fly around the house. This is the main house, its area is 2,800 square meters. It stands right in the middle of the plot. But you can only see it well from above because it's fully surrounded with large trees. Let's fly to the far corner of the lot. There are plenty of interesting things there as well. In the backyard, if I may call it that, is a huge artificial pond. Unfortunately, we couldn't confirm whether it has any ducks. Next to the pond are several gazebos and a separate guest house. There's a blue boat on the water, and a tent is seen on the shore. The total area of this Rublevka lot is more than four hectares. We also see that there's a large pool next to the house, whose roof is covered in lawn grass and crisscrossed with pathways. And the entrance to the territory, here we see a garage with four gates, a checkpoint, and a guardhouse, 
Considering its size and location, such a state costs around 5 billion rubles, or 85.5 million dollars. 5 billion rubles. It's a giant sum, whichever way you look at it. Where does the foundation for socially important projects get 5 billion rubles to buy all of this? Here's the answer. The foundation didn't buy the estate. It received it as a gift. And here we come to the description of the felony. Because you know who made this gift. Here's who. Russia's richest oligarch, Alisher Usmanov, the owner of a giant fortune built on the remains of the Soviet mining industry. The tax resident of Switzerland. He simply gave an estate worth 5 billion rubles as a gift to the foundation with very close ties to the prime minister. What is it called? That's right, a bribe. A real bribe, a classic one. And both Usmanov and Medvedev understand this. Which is why the gift was registered to the foundation, which is managed by one of Medvedev's classmates and shared by another, while the subsidiary company's director is the same person in whose name the DACA at Plesh is registered. And if you forget, the maintenance is done by Promtekinvest, where Medvedev has his trainers delivered. Absolutely everything in this list points to the fact that the real owner of the Reblevka estate is Medvedev himself. We have declared war on corruption, and we know who our enemy is. One episode with a country estate and a gift worth 5 billion is enough to send both Usmanov and Mefidev to the felon's dock. But we'll continue digging. This is far from all. Okay, so let's continue entangling this snarl further. Even though this should be the job of the investigative committee, but we are doing it instead for some reason. The same Promtech Invest company that services the estate at Rublevka also manages another very interesting entity. Take a look at this engineer job listing that we found on a Sochi job site. Organization, Promtech Invest. Responsibilities. And now pay attention. Operation and maintenance of the Psikaka House of Official Receptions. Krasna Polyana. It is here at the Psikaka Ridge that this reception house is located. This is supposedly an Olympic venue built for the Sochi 2014 Games. But this is not an athletic center and it's not a hotel and no guests are ever received here. This is a private residence built specifically for Dmitry Medvedev. Let's take a look and get some proof. First, let's talk about the venue. As usual, we'll be enjoying it from above. We take off from the slopes of Psikaka Ridge at Krasnaya Polyani and right away we see the venue's dedicated helicopter pad and the complex of buildings. To the left is a guest house for the very important guests. To the right, a garage and a guardhouse for those who guard all this beauty. Both buildings have an area of more than 1,000 square meters, but the main thing is still ahead. It's the main house. It is huge, and its area is more than 4,000 square meters. But the really interesting stuff is, of course, inside. There are numerous fireplaces, salt grottos, something called showers of impressions, and a pool with various attractions. The giant warm water pool with a courtyard entrance can be seen from above. And altogether, the sauna complex of this house is 1,000 square meters. The area of this land lot is 3.7 hectares, and the total cost is 7 billion rubles, or 119 million dollars. This is one of the largest houses that we ever filmed. And considering its location at the height of 1,500 meters, it has no equals. By the way, pay attention that the Ples and Psakaka residences look quite similar. The story with Psakaka House is the same as with Medvedev's Daka. At first, the land lease and the building were registered to the Dar Foundation. But soon, as you can already imagine, something happened. The Dar Foundation re-gifted it all to another unknown foundation with another impressive name, Foundation for Support of Winter Olympic Sports. That's right, it's another charity foundation. Well, the only new thing about this foundation is its name. We already know its owners and managers. Chairman of the Supervisory Council is, drumroll please, Ilya Yelisev. This is the fourth charity foundation where Yelisev occupies such a role. The founder is Vitaly Golovichev. I could have introduced him in the previous chapter, when we spoke about Socially Important Projects Foundation, as Golovchev is the founder of both. 
By the way, he also works at the Dar Foundation, heading its administration company. But we'll get to that later. Proof that the real owner of this residence is this skier in a pom-pom hat can be found in his Instagram. It's all about his love of romantic winter photos. We found this three-year-old photo in Medvedev's Instagram. Then we found another one, which was very similar and made two years ago. Both photos show some street lamps and a lot of snow. We compare them with the photographs of Tsikaka residents and see the exact same street lamps. Here's last year's photo with a poetic comment, ice and fire. We are interested in the mountain silhouettes and the chimney with a triangular roof. Compare it to the photographs made at Sakaka. And once again, we have a full match. It looks like Medvedev constantly stays at this mountain residence. Nobody told us this, not his neighbors, not some eyewitnesses. The prime minister himself publishes the photos. Nobody forced him to do this. By the way, here's an amusing detail. It's a letter from the same mailbox where we found Medvedev's shirts and trainers. It's a to-do list. The subject line reads, level 1,456. That's the height above the sea level where Psakaka residence is located. Here's Medvedev ordering some decanters, good wine glasses, and wine itself. He asks that they are split between the mountain, that's Psakaka, and the river, that's Plish. And the main thing, according to his own words, is a full set of handmaids and administrators. Let's go back to the beginning. I mentioned that the address to which Medvedev's purchases are delivered is home to two companies. One of them services the secret residences. We puzzled that out. The other company owns a stake in Medvedev's secret businesses. This firm is called ZAO Technpro Company. It is the nominal owner of a 75% stake in the agricultural holding Monsarova. To talk about this holding and its properties, we'll have to go to the Kursk region. We had just visited Rublevka and Krasnaya Polyana. Why would we want to go to the Kursk region? I hear you say, but nobody gets to choose his historic homeland. And it was in the Kursk region, in the village of Mansarova, that Medvedev's grandfather lived, and his father Anatoly was also born there. Just like other corrupt Russian officials, Medvedev sees himself as a nobleman of sorts. And what kind of nobleman doesn't have a familial estate? For lack of a better alternative, Monsarovo was chosen as a location of the ancestral home. And if it happens that you'll be flying over the Kursk region, which really isn't wealthy, you'll be surprised when you see such magnificence among the rickety houses. Right there, in the middle of the field. The area of this estate is about 240,000 square meters. I doubt that there's a more swanky real estate in all of the region. Everyone at Mansarova knows about it, and this estate is even a cause for the local residents' pride. But they've never actually seen it, because the lot, just like the Milovka estate at Plesh, is surrounded by a solid fence. Driving on the road that leads to the estate is forbidden. Nonetheless, it's not an impediment for the Anti-Corruption Foundation, which is why we present to you another secret DACA of Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev in all its glory. Beyond the high fence is the estate territory. To the left is an athletic field. In the center, a pond and the main house. Its approximate area is 1,500 square meters. The lot is well kept, with tidy footpaths and fanciful landscape design. Let's fly to the other side. In the far corner of the lot, we see a parking space and a house for the servants. The chairman of this company's board of directors is, and I hear once again say this name, Medvedev's classmate Ilya Yelisev. The purchase of the land, by the way, was financed by Finance Consulting K Company, which is a new name of the Dar Foundation's financial and consulting company. Let's take another look at the Mansarova residence from afar. We can see two helicopter pads, a filling station, and the endless emptiness of Kursk expanses. We didn't even have to search for proof of Medvedev visiting his Kirk residence. Ilya Yelisev told about it himself. This is a guest house for our employees. Sometimes Dmitry Medvedev stays here when he comes to Mansarova. He has to stay somewhere, doesn't he? And we wouldn't send him 60 kilometers to Kursk to stay in a hotel. You should see this residence. It's a one-story, comfortable wooden building. 
And here's what the local residents say. He comes here every year, stays overnight. Medvedev. It's a pity he has not come this year. He was with his wife and son. We're here. They have visited the shop over there. And there is a DACA built over there, not far from the village. And he comes there. That place is fenced, I have not been there. When he comes, he stays there. There are guards. He doesn't come often. He was not here this year, but he came last year. Where does he stay? In the dock over there. He visits the church and the cafe. Visits the shops, then he goes to... Lots of the guards come and sit in the bushes and everywhere. And some cars are driving in some mobile kitchen and some army men are coming. Different people are coming. He supplied us all with gas and a new road was, was built. He helps us. So it goes. Let's fly a little bit away from this one-story comfortable wooden building. Let's fly over the desolate houses and sheds and take a closer look. Here's a chapel. It stands right on the spot where the house of Medvedev's grandfather stood and completes the image of the ancestral home. A plaque on the wall reads, built with assistance and commitment from Dmitry Anatolievich Medvedev in place of his ancestral home. It was consecrated on September 14, 2010, the Prime Minister's 45th birthday. In addition to the chapel, there's a church. The opening of such church at Mansarova was a big event. There was a local TV crew, and the guests included the assistant of then-president Mikhail Trinoga, the governor of Kursk region, and many other officials. The church has a belfry, and its main 400-kilogram bell is called Ilya. We could only guess whether it's named in honor of Medvedev's son, Ilya, or his classmate, Yelisev, who manages all this property. But swanky houses and churches aren't enough for a real nobleman estate. One needs a farmstead, eared fields, grazing cows, horse stables, and Medvedev has all of that too. The Mansarova Agricultural Complex, which owns the Kursk estate, also controls 27,000 hectares of land, over 3,000 heads of cattle, cows imported from the U.S., a pig farm, a stud farm, milk production facilities, and hundreds of units of agricultural equipment. Medvedev's agricultural empire is also headed by his classmate Ilya Yelisev. And among its top managers is an even more interesting character. Please meet Andrei Vasilyevich Medvedev. This is the Prime Minister's cousin. He is the son of Svetlana Medvedeva, Medvedev's aunt, who lives in southern Russia. She is a poet and an honorary teacher of Russia. She really does have a son named Andrei. She talked about him in an interview. Let's talk a little bit about this newfound Prime Minister's cousin. He owns another agriculture enterprise, also in the Kursk region. It grows tomatoes, cucumbers, and roses in hothouses. Medvedev's brother established it together with LLC Kurspromt Iplitsa. And here it gets interesting, because Kurspromt Iplitsa is 100% owned by the Socially Important Projects Foundation, the one that received the Roblevka estate from Usmanov. As you can see, Medvedev has family ties with the Agricultural Complex and the Socially Important Projects Foundation. Oh, and don't forget that legally all this Kursk magnificence is owned by ZAO Technipro the company to whose address Medvedev's trainers are delivered. Okay. Not that I need a drink before this next chapter, but maybe it wouldn't be such a bad idea. Here I just want to show you a bottle of Kohorus wine. The manufacturer writes that the grapes for the wine were harvested at the Skalitsi Bereg vineyard next to Anapa. And so we go there to take a look at the southern properties of our protagonist. We get to Anapa the same way we found Mansurova in the Kursk region, through the Tekin Pro company, whose address Medvedev uses for his online shopping. Looking through the list of this company's subsidiaries, we find LLC Skalisti Berek. 
Its co-founder is the already familiar Socially Important Projects Foundation. We discovered that the Skilistiberg LLC owns almost 100 hectares of land on the Black Sea coast, not far from Manapa. These are some very picturesque places. On the industry website, Skilisti Barrack Vineyards is called Renowned in Private. It's closed off to the tourists and visitors, but those who are able to see the vineyard with their own eyes do right. And here you begin to understand exclusivity of this project. The views here are such that if you stand with your back to the sea, you can imagine yourself in Tuscany. The soft rolling hills with straight rows of vines, exclusively beautiful. An exclusive project with serious approach, reminiscent of Italian Tuscany, bellissima. Here I wink at you emphatically and recommend that you watch this video to the end. I'll tell you one thing. We'll get to Tuscany in our own time. Are you going to take a wild guess and tell me who's the chairman of this company's supervisory council? We already had the drum roll, so what's this time? Fanfare? It's Ilya Yelisev. And the vineyard's director used to be a certain Andrei Zminye. This is the person who later became the head of Gradislava Foundation, Eplusa. So these are Medvedev's boys once again. The people are the same, only companies and positions are different. From the moment that he acquired the vineyards, Medvedev became a true fan of winemaking and began to promote the industry's interests in the government. In 2013, Medvedev made wine an agricultural, not alcoholic product. Later, he allowed its advertising on TV. The government also was given the right to set minimum wine prices. Medvedev visits Abraud Yursa, organizes large meetings about winemaking, and instructs the government to lower excise duties on wine. He asks the Ministry of Agriculture and its head, Alexander Kchuva, to develop a complex of government support measures for the winemakers. The Minister of Agriculture, Chkuva, supports him in every way. And it's not for nothing. Today, Medvedev's vineyards are managed by the same person that manages the private vineyards of the Chkuva family. In the wonderful Russia of tomorrow, we could condemn a prime minister for blatant lobbying activities in favor of the industry, in which she has a personal financial interest. In the wonderful Russia of tomorrow, with its rule of law, he would be sacked along with his minister of agriculture. We will remember this, but for now, let's move on. Let's continue with the geographical expansion of Medvedev's empire. Now let's go to St. Petersburg, his hometown. Unlike in the Kursk region, this is where his real home is. This is the city where he was born, grew up, went to school, and began his career. It would be rather strange if we didn't find anything of Medvedev's there. In 2009, an unknown company called Certum Invest acquired the right of ownership to this building on the Neva River embankment. This is a historic building and a monument of architecture the palace of Count Kushilev Bezbaroka. It has retained all the attributes of pre-revolutionary luxury. Fireplaces, marble stairways, stucco. But the real buyer of the building remained unknown. The sole founder of Sertum Invest was a 29-year-old Philip Polyansky, who wasn't a businessman or a well-known real estate developer. He refused to name his partners or tell where his money comes from, or anything else for that matter. But it was enough to wait just a few months and everything fell into place. The real owner appeared in 2010. Look at the cadastral excerpts and pay attention to the change in ownership. It used to be sort of invest, and three months later, the Dar Foundation appears. This is not a coincidence. Philip Polyansky is not an outsider. For several years, he was the head of the Dar Foundation. He's also a graduate of St. Petersburg University. He's a student of our old acquaintance Ilya Yelisev. It all points to the fact that the building was, from the very beginning, purchased from Medvedev's Dar Foundation, while the Sertum Invest commercial company is just another reincarnation of the same organization and the same people. For several years, the Dar Foundation worked on refurbishing the building. In 2016, it was completed. Don't even hope that the charitable foundation had built an orphanage or a hospital there. You should remember by now that Dar Foundation is a very specific charity giver. It only helps one family, Dmitry Medvedev's. Now this building is an elite clubhouse with 29 apartments. It's difficult to overestimate its eliteness. 
In addition to the traditional pools, spas, garages, and guards, some of the apartments have elevators for cars. You can drive to your living room right from the street. The apartments are divided between the Dar Foundation and Sirtum Invest Company. The foundation owns six apartments with a total area of 1,800 square meters. The market price of these apartments alone is about a billion rubles or 17 million dollars. Here's one of the apartments that belongs to the charitable Dar Foundation. What a stylish entrance hall, I hear you saying. It's not an entrance hall, guys. Such stairways are located inside the apartment. Also, there is a stucco work with angels, griffins, and Greek caryatides. There's even special accommodation for the servants with its own entrance. The apartment's total area is 500 square meters on two floors. By the way, we found the financial and consulting company of the Dar Foundation among the owners of the non-residential quarters. If you remember, that was the company that financed the purchase of land from Medvedev's ancestral home in the Kursk region. We don't know yet what will happen to the apartments in this mansion. It's possible that one of them will be used by Medvedev himself, his friends or relatives. Maybe the apartments, as usual, will be registered to some new foundation with a telling name, such as the Foundation for Safekeeping of St. Petersburg Marble Stairways and Car Elevators. Adaka at Poloshka, a residence in the mountains, an ancestral home in the Kursk region, along with a full-fledged agriculture business, house at Rublevka, along with some vineyards and vintage palaces. This is just a partial list of things I already told you about. And I'm sure that all of you want to know, where did the money come from? Who is sponsoring this feast? And how does this actually work? There are so many entities spread around different regions, and all of them require personnel, construction workers, handmaids, administrators, and bookkeepers. It's a huge infrastructure. Let me explain how this works. The Dar Foundation, it received donations from the natural resource oligarchs and Novatech shareholders Mikkelsen and Simonovsky. They deposited 33 billion rubles or $565 million to the charter capital of the pseudo charity foundation. Another oligarch, Alisher Usmanov, made his contribution in kind by gifting the estate at the village of Znamonska at Reblivka. We'll put a 5 billion ruble price tag on his contribution. The Dar Foundation has a separate legal entity, its administration company. It used to be called Administration Company Dar, but then it was renamed into impersonal Orion LLC. Remember this name, we'll get to see it later. Giant sums of money pass through the administration company, which then redistributes them. But where do they come from? We found the source of subsistence for the administration company of Dar Foundation. And not just anywhere, no, we found it in the old accounting records of Gazprom Bank. This bank gave the company a credit of 11 billion rubles or $463 million. It's such a big sum that for two years, administration company Dar was Gazprom Bank's largest borrower. Here you can see it, in the second place. Such support from Gazprom Bank is very easy to explain. Medvedev's principal confidant, Ilya Yelishev, is the deputy chairman of the bank's board. In addition to the giant credits from Gazprom Bank, Medvedev's empire also subsists on smaller credits. For example, the company's Bashneft gave it a credit for almost 3 billion rubles. Altogether, there are about 20 billion rubles or $342 million worth of smaller credit tranches. And so, by parsing the documents and open financial records, we easily discover 70 billion rubles or $1.2 billion. This money is used to buy and build. And here I once again urge you to carefully read our site that accompanies this video. Because there you can get all the details and copies of the documents that demonstrates the way Dmitry Medvedev's corruption schemes are financed. After all, corruption, it's a state of mind. Here's another interesting question. How is this whole system managed? There are dozens of legal entities and all sorts of assets, from country homes to stud farms, spread out across six different regions. The answer is simple. It's all managed by the same people. I had already mentioned Vitaly Golovichev. He is the nominal owner of the Foundation for Socially Important Government Projects and the Foundation for Support of Winter Olympic Sports, the one with the mountain residence at Sikaka. He is also the director of the Dar Foundation's administration company. Golovichev owns another firm, or rather, another administration company, Meritash. Its job is to provide centralized support and management of Medvedev's assets. 
One of Meritas' jobs is to hire personnel. Amongst job openings is the position of cheesemaker at the country house in Plushk. The agricultural complex in the Kursk region needs a bookkeeper and a systems administrator. That's for Mansurova, obviously. There are also jobs for medical personnel in the White Rose Diagnostic Center that was opened by Svetlana Medvedeva Foundation of Social and Cultural Initiatives. There are also positions with a job address that's exactly the same as the office address of the Dar Foundation. But it's not just the job openings. Meritage is also engaged in domain registration. Employees of Meritage had registered the domains for a whole list of companies, often specifying themselves as contact persons. Goraslava Foundation, Foundation for Socially Important State Projects, Dar Foundation, Svetlana Medvedeva's Foundation for Social and Cultural Initiatives, Certum Invest Company, Skalisti Berig Vineyards. This list contains almost all the companies mentioned in our investigation. As you can see, they receive their services from a single center. Their financing is also similar. These companies are connected through common employees and addresses. The real estate is registered in the name of the same people, but the main element that unites it all in one system is Dmitry Medvedev. <laughs> Apartments, dakas, estates, entertainment, there's plenty of stuff. What's missing? A yacht, of course. I know that you all can't wait to see it, but wait just a little bit more. I'm going to tell you how we found this yacht. Here's even some more intrigue. Not a yacht, but yachts. The one that bought the Count's Palace in St. Petersburg has recently acquired a second co-founder, a Cypress offshore. Now that's a promising find. This is the first offshore among the numerous charitable foundations that own the Dakas and estates. It was through this offshore and a chain of common addresses and directors that we found another Cypress-based company, Frosina Limited, which is 100% owned by Medvedev's classmates Ilya Yelisev. After that, we've discovered much, much more. Fursina Limited has a subsidiary in Russia. It's called Investment Commonwealth. The principal type of its activity is the rent and leasing of waterborne craft. Sounds very promising, doesn't it? And with good reason. Among the certificates issued to this company, we see the certificate for the Princess 85 MY yacht. At the moment of its purchase, such yacht costs around 200 million rubles. And this is what it looks like. It wasn't difficult to find out the name of the yacht. In 2009, Roskom Nadzor issued two licenses for radio stations to the investment commonwealth and specified the vessel that will use them. The yacht's name is Fotinia. So we quickly began to search for this yacht all across the Russian internet. We found a photograph from 2014, and you can see this very yacht, which is moored, where do you think? At Pulusa, at the pier of the Milovka estate, Medvedev's very secret DACA. But that's not all. In 2015, the investment commonwealth acquired another yacht. It's absolutely new and much more expensive. The model is Princess 32M. Its cost, 11 million rubles. Considering the exchange rate at the moment of purchase, it was 630 million rubles. And adding all the customs duties, the total cost was about 900 million rubles. The yacht was imported in the summer of 2015, and its name is... You won't believe this. Fotinia. They gave the same name to their second yacht. I hope you paid close attention. And remember how the yacht looks. Otherwise, how would we recognize it? moored at the Mlovka estate in Plus in July of last year. We are convinced that both of these yachts, with a total value in excess of 1 billion rubles, registered to the offshore company of Medvedev's best friend, Ilya Yelisivya, actually belong to Medvedev himself. This is particularly implied by the name of both yachts, Fotinia. I have to admit that I didn't realize right away where this name came from. But it all turned out to be very simple. Fotinia is the church version of the name Svetlana. For a long time, Svetlana was considered forbidden in Orthodox Christianity. And when Svetlanas were baptized, their name was changed to Fotinia. So both yachts are named in honor of Svetlana. An amazing coincidence. But aren't there plenty of Svetlanas? I hear you saying. And here I pass the word to the specialists of the Department of Investigations at the Anti-Corruption Foundation, who will take just a couple of minutes to dispel all of your doubts about the real owner of these yachts. The yacht is rarely used and is usually moored in Moscow or St. Petersburg, but one route is very traceable. 
This yacht took four trips to place to Medvedev's Dhaka. But this is not all. Let's use our favorite source for this investigation, Medvedev's own Instagram. Here's a shot from June 26, 2016. Residents of St. Petersburg won't have any trouble recognizing the scene in the picture. This is the annual high school graduation celebration called the Crimson Sails. It's a very beautiful event. The key moments of the celebration are the fireworks and the passage of the Crimson Sailed ship down the Neva River. And what an incredible coincidence that the Fotinia yacht ended up being right there, right then. We couldn't believe our eyes, since here is the decree of the government of St. Petersburg which forbids the passage of vessels in the area at that time. It couldn't be that a very special exception was made for one special yacht, right? Let's take a closer look at the video of this celebration. Right away we see a mysterious silhouette on the water. There could be no doubt that this is Medvedev's yacht, Fortinia. It was from this very yacht that our Prime Minister posted the pictures of the fireworks to his Instagram while drinking cocktails on the deck not far from the regular residents of the city who also came out for this event. In 2015, Medvedev also watched the Crimson Sails ceremony from his yacht Fortinia. This is confirmed by the yacht's geolocation for that day. Nothing else to add here. Both yachts are registered with an offshore company owned by Dmitry Medvedev's most trusted confidant, Ilya Yelisev. We see them moored near the Milovka estate at Plusk, which is Medvedev's residence. Both yachts are named Fotinia, which is the church version of the name Svetlana. That's the name of Medvedev's wife. All instances of the yacht's use are connected to Medvedev. We should just admit the obvious. The yachts worth 1 billion rubles were bought for the leader of the United Russia Party, Dmitry Medvedev. I save the best for last, obviously. We're talking about the foreign real estate. It's registered to the same offshore as Medvedev's yacht. It wasn't that difficult to find it. Fresina Limited, owned, as you remember, by Yelisev, has to disclose its financial records. The records are published on the website of Cyprus's business registry and made available to everyone. The financial records hide the main secret. Here it is. Looking through the list of subsidiary companies, we find a resounding Italian name, Fattoria della Aiola. And this finally takes us not to the snowy Kursk region, or to St. Petersburg, but to the sunny and beautiful Italian Tuscany. We are taking off to fly above Dmitry Medvedev's Italian vineyards. They are located in the very center of Tuscany, the region known primarily for its wines. And right away, we see a small olive grove. There are many of them here. We fly further and turn right. The building ahead is the factory store that sells locally produced wines and olive oil. Beyond the store, we encounter some grand Tuscan landscapes. The territory is so great that it's impossible to see it all. The total area of vineyards, olive groves, and forests is 100 hectares, which is 1 million square meters. That's like two Vatican's or half of Monaco. We turn back to the store, and we see that there are warehouses and production facilities below. But what Italian vineyard would exist without its own villa, you ask? Here it is, right in front of you. It even has its own name, Villa del Aiola. It was built in the 17th century on top of the ruins of an ancient castle. It has 30 rooms and a total area of 1,500 square meters. Such is the cozy Italian nest that came into possession of our Prime Minister along with a million square meters of Tuscan land. Let's wait until Mr. Medvedev delights his Instagram followers with new photos of cedars and some romantic comments. The company site, which is available in Russian, says that the winery was bought in 2012 by Russian investors. All of the winery's personnel, including clerks in the store, they speak Russian. The managing director is also no outsider. According to this excerpt from the Italian registry, this position is occupied by Sergei Stupnitsky. Prior to this, he was the general director of Skalitsi Berig, Medvedev's vineyard at Anapa. Skeptics can once again say that this doesn't mean anything, and that banker Yelisev could have bought himself an Italian vineyard. There are no limitations for him. 
But the documents, once again, disprove the skeptics. The documents show that the money in Fersina Limited accounts are not Ilya Yelisev's personal savings. Here is the credit section. Here we see where the offshore company gets its money to buy yachts and vineyards. There are two sources, and we know both of them well by now. One is the administration company of the Dar Foundation, now known as Orion LLC, and the other one is the financial and consulting company of the Dar Foundation. In 2013, it provided the offshore company with a $53 million credit. And these companies are not just some outside creditors. In the report itself, they are labeled as related undertakings. This means that they are controlled by the same people. But by this time, we already know that really well. And I think that we provided enough evidence that the entities of the Dar Foundation are there to serve the interests of Dmitry Medvedev and his company. The corrupt money of the foundation and its subsidiaries is spent by the Cyprus offshore to purchase yachts that Medvedev uses occasionally and Italian vineyards, which seems to be the Prime Minister's latest hobby and passion. It's time to sum up our video investigation. And the conclusion is rather sad. Former president and acting prime minister, the leader of the ruling United Russia Party, has created a corrupt network of charity foundations that he uses to receive bribes from the oligarchs and spends this money to build himself palaces and dhakas all across the country like some kind of maniac. He also buys yachts and medieval castles abroad. He's not even really hiding because thousands of people are engaged in servicing Medvedev and his real estate. These secret palaces are guarded by the special services of the state. So basically, the secret is only kept from you and me, from the people of Russia, at whose expense all of this is built. But within the corridors of power, everyone knows everything. And Medvedev can steal so much and so openly because Putin does the same, but on a greater scale. Because everyone in the government does this. Because the judges and the prosecutors and the special services are also doing the same. They are becoming millionaires and billionaires with the help of corruption. And this is the main conclusion of our investigation. The system is so rotten that there's nothing healthy left. People in this film have been in power for 17 years and they've built a perfect mechanism to turn Russia's national treasures into palaces and bank accounts for themselves and their children. And this is the main reason why our country on the whole is very rich, but people who live here are very poor. Every day, we see people who try to raise money for the medical treatment of their relatives, to buy the necessary drugs, to pay for surgery. And every time we think, Lord, why isn't the state money enough? Where is it? This is where the state money is. We just showed you. 10 billion here, 20 billion there, this is it. There simply isn't any money, but you hang in there. The fact that it's happening doesn't mean that we should resign ourselves to this. After all, this is our country, and these swindlers are stealing our money. Everyone should fight whichever way he can. Any of you can help us and yourself by sharing this video. Send a link to your friends. Tell your relatives what you saw. Yes, Television is fully controlled by this mafia, and no one will ever say a word about these facts. But we can overcome censorship by passing information from person to person. I am taking part in this election. I will run for president, because I don't want the heroes of this and other investigations to stay in power for another 10 years, while further ruining the country. Your support is very important, and I ask you to put your signature for my nomination. There's a link in description of this video, and if you lend me your support, then in 2018, I'll be the candidate who will tell these people in your name, we are tired of corruption and we no longer wish to tolerate it.